Hello and welcome to the third lecture, what happens in molecular dynamics. Um, as a flashback, we have already mentioned that we will give you a generalized introduction on molecular dynamics and we'll go step by step on the underlying processes and uh, cross-platform cross functionalities. So we are at the molecular dynamics series step of this course and we will give you a short introduction on the underlying principles, what happens under the hood in molecular dynamics. And uh, we'll also learn software and data analysis by molecular dynamics at the later part of the course. And we have given you a brief introduction on molecular docking servers and software in the previous lecture, as sometimes we need to do molecular docking before we actually run molecular dynamics. So why molecular dynamics? Uh, as you can see in the first lecture, I have given you a kind of a motivation uh, in terms of a research question that we can solve several research questions, be it in material science or uh, biomolecular system. And uh, we can solve several problems, uh, several length scale and time scale related problems. And also we can uh, analyze interaction from molecular docking scenario, as we have mentioned in the second lecture. And we can observe those interaction, observe the stability of a system and calculate several properties, for example, mechanical uh, and uh, force or displacement related properties and so on. Uh, sometimes we also uh, dedicate molecular dynamic simulation to determine uh, thermodynamic or electronic configuration related properties also. So uh, why molecular dynamics? The, the answer is that we can do uh, a range of uh, tasks by using this tool. And if we talk about the scope, there are several simulation methods uh, at our disposal. If we use uh, density function theory, uh, that actually deals with a very little time scale, for example, picosecond, and also very little length scale. So you can simulate nanometer length of a uh, system and you can simulate it for several picoseconds, but you can deal with uh, only a few number of atoms because you are uh, working at the very electronic configuration level. But if you talk about molecular dynamics, you can see that uh, the range in terms of time scale and length scale is quite diverse. You can uh, simulate um, hundreds of uh, or thousands of millions of atoms uh, for nanometer, uh, nanometer and micrometer lengths for several nanoseconds to several microseconds. And you can determine atomistic to macromolecular properties. And if your system is too large, then you cannot be in this range uh, um, of classical molecular dynamics. You have to do continuum level modeling and you can determine uh, properties of uh, millisecond to hours. And generally it is done for macro scale level of systems. Uh, a word of note is that sometimes you can also do, uh, you can also make a bigger system uh, by using a coarse grained model in molecular dynamics. Uh, but in this uh, course, we will stay in the classical molecular dynamics region and uh, uh, we'll deal with only uh, this level of time scale and length scale and number of atoms. That is, we'll be in the range of atomistic to macromolecular uh, level system building. So what happens in molecular dynamics is that you actually solve Newton's equation of force. What you start with that, generally when you see a visualization of molecular dynamic simulation, you see uh, a bunch of atoms vibrating uh, in a simulation box. What is happening is that you start with an atomistic model, that is the, the uh, initial structure, be it a material structure or a protein, and then you apply a force field that is actually uh, an energetic state of the system. And that is a bunch of rules in terms of energy that you apply to the system so that uh, you can theoretically determine their trajectory. And you start with an initial position and velocity according to your system. And what happens is that you calculate your forces in terms of uh, the energy of the system, the potential energy of the system, and then after applying this bunch of rules to the system, 
you know, update this uh, the atomistic uh, atomic position and velocity of the system, and then you continue it. Uh, you do it repeatedly uh, at a uh, at a specific time interval. Then, at the end, when your simulation ends, you get uh, a bunch of trajectory data that you analyze and. From that, you extract your output results, be it force, displacement, or stress or strain. In short, at a very high level, that is what uh, happens uh, in molecular dynamic simulation. So uh, as you can see that if equal to MA is the uh, governing equation in molecular dynamics that is going on under the hood, you, are, uh, have, uh, you have an initial structure, you are applying a bunch of molecular dynamics theoretical uh, conditions on the system and you get the trajectory and motion of the atoms in the system. Why? You want to capture their atom uh, scale behavior and property. And when you combine those uh, at a macro scale, you can calculate their macro scale behavior. So where does the energy uh, come into play in this scenario? What happens is that uh, you can actually define a system in terms of a potential energy function. And you can actually relate the force and uh, energy by this given relation, very simplistic relation where you can determine the force of a system from the energy of the system. And that's why uh, when you are applying the energetic relation to the system, you are actually solving the F equal to MA equation. So you can get a sense that uh, you have a structure and you are applying molecular dynamics conditions on that system to perform a simulation and get a set of trajectory data. So uh, most important thing in molecular dynamics simulation is the energy function, that is the interatomic potentials. That is the bunch of governing rules that you are applying on the um, on system. So where does uh, the energy function come from? Uh, that's the topic of the next lecture. We'll go into detail of energy function, how we define a system's energy function uh, in molecular dynamic simulation and what are their types uh, and how uh, are they generated? Uh, how do we get them? So that's what we will deal with uh, in the next lecture. Um, so I will see you there. Thanks.